Year's and Happy New Year. I hope you had a great celebration over Christmas and New Year's. I kept mine pretty quiet this year as I have been pretty tired from work. Um, getting back into full-time work has been exhausting while you're trying to get everything else done. Um, you, you probably saw that um, my projects and videos dropped off towards the end of the year as I went into full-time work about two and a half, three months ago and it was just a bit stressful and a bit hard to keep up with all of it. So I decided that this year we're going to keep it a little bit more relaxed. I'm still going to try and put a video out every week but I'm not necessarily going to try and complete a project every single week. So the videos are going to be of the phases I am up to in the project and how I got there. So they're going to kind of build on each other. So the first project I'm going to head into this year is going to be making a wee quilt. But I'm going to do this by using a panel fabric that was designed to be cut up and to make a bunting. So I got these panels from my local Spotlight. Uh, they were on clearance and I will open one up so you can see what it's... So as you can see, it is all pre-printed out for triangles. This is designed for you to cut all of these panels up and to make a bunting. I'm not really that interested in making a bunting. I don't really have a need for making a bunting. But I thought that if I took two of these and cut them up, so I would probably get enough fabric there for a baby quilt. Um, so that's the plan. So I'll give you a closer look at each panel and we'll go from there. This is the first one I got. I loved the brightness of these panels and how well they went together and think that they would look really really nice as a quilt. Um, I brought two panels for this one. You can see at the bottom it has the instructions on what you're supposed to do to make them into buntings. But like I said, I'm not really that interested in making them into buntings. I actually think if I cut them all out on these lines here, it will make a really nice quilt. So I reckon at first I'll just cut the pieces on these lines. I think I'll do that just by hand with some scissors. You probably you could quite easily get your ruler out and cut it but I think scissors will be fine. So for those who are new to quilting you might not know that you can buy some fabrics in a panel. Now if you're buying a fabric in a panel it's usually the whole design is to make a project. I'm still going to do the first step which is cut all of these into their individual triangles. Well I have all of the triangles cut out. There are 60 in total. I have ironed them as well because they were a little bit wrinkly. The only thing is, is as I was ironing them I did notice especially with the ones that were on the edge that some of them are a bit of a wonky triangle. Um, I don't know you can probably see in this one particularly you can see how it curves on that edge. So I'm going to have a look at the sizing of the triangles and just kind of see how accurate they are all over because some of them look quite even in their triangle and then others to me look a little bit off. So I need to figure out if they are off or if it's just me seeing it and if so how much and, um, and can I work around it? Am I going to need to trim them all down? I think they're generally the same size. I think there's just a few like this where you can see that it's this line is bowed and there was a couple that were really obvious. Let me see if I can find another one. Oh, yeah, like that one. You can see that not only is this corner bow, this bowed, but it also drops quite a bit lower on this side. It's quite so. Hopefully, all that means is that I can just straighten this piece up by trimming the edge off here to the same size as all the other triangles. I just have to do some measurements and check that out. I'm going to play with some ideas on how to put them together. As there is 60 pieces here and the easiest option, which I'm probably going to go with, is to create um, a line 
deciding how long I want that line to be. But it's more when I create this line, do I want those points to be in the middle? Sorry, I am just choosing colours at random at the moment. So it's just Or do I want these points to line up? So So the kind of fun thing about lining them up is you kind of get to play with these sort of the six colours here together instead of just the when this way you're not really playing as much with colour combo. So I'm really liking this idea. I had thought the other option would be to turn them all into together but I'm not quite I've not done hexagons and pinwheels and things like that before so obviously if you did something like this sorry, they, would, they would all latch over a little bit is you then need to turn that into a square with some triangles here which I like maybe giving this a go, but not for this first one. <laughs> maybe that's something I might consider when I've got more of the other panels, because then I could make the, I don't know, the pictures go together. So I think this is, a, this is an option, but probably not today's, not the one I'm going with, because... I think that's just and as you can see if you did it this way um, you would end up needing to create a square in the middle here so you would need another fabric which is fun as well Hmm. So as I said before, the triangles themselves are not all even. So what I want to try and make is what we call an isosceles triangle, which is where you have two equal sides. Now trying to go back to fifth form maths and try and remember what an isosceles triangle is and then how to make one, took a bit of Google and a call to my dad. As my dad is a builder and so he uses angles and maths all day long, so he explained to me how we make one. So I'm going to explain it to you. Um, this, is, this is the template we've come up with. And to get that, we first got our fabric. We measured the tip to the edge that we needed. Um, which for this fabric was 24 and a half centimeters. We did measure several triangles to make sure that that measurement was fitting all of them. And then we measured the bottom so that we knew how wide we needed the bottom of our triangle. At this stage, I was still quite confused, but I was reassured by my dad that it works. Alright, so to create my template, we have measured the length we want the triangle as well as the width we would like the bottom of the triangle. The first thing is we're going to mark a top, create a straight line for the triangle, and then we're going to mark what we want. Now we're going to go for 24 and a half centimeters. Hopefully you can see that line and I've marked it at the bottom here and I've got the top of my triangle. Now I'm wanting 18 centimeters across. So I want to get an idea on where 18 centimeters comes up. 
I'm just going to put a little few markers on where that sort of the lines just so we have a bit of an idea of where we're going and then because we're doing an because we're doing a triangle that has two equal sides and I always forget what it's called um, we want to level this up we want to know where our 24 and a half is and we want to know where our 18 centimeters roughly is as well so we're looking at eyeballing it to about there so I'm still going to check that across with this one yep definitely on the 18 so I'm going to take my point again right at the top of the triangle find my 25 again So I've noticed that I've done this one just a few mils out, which means my angle is just a little bit wide on there. So I'm just going to bring it in just a little bit. And that's just bringing the angle of the... Probably just the angle that I've had the pen on. So there we go. Okay, and there I have my template for my triangle, so all I need to do is cut it out. So now that we've got it cut out, we are going to grab our plastic ruler, and I'm going to have a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is standard for our quilting. So I'm going to line up my ruler, my, my paper template on my ruler. So I'll take that tip right down so that it's in there nicely. Now with my templates on my cutting, on my ruler, grab my cutting mat and one of my fabrics and I'll show you how I'm going to line it up. I'm going to line up this side of the pattern with the colour. So in this instance the pink with the edge of the pink and cut off the excess here. So just lining that up. And cutting that bit off. Helps if you have a good roll cutter. There we go. And then I'm going to grab the fabric and flip it over. And this time I'm going to line up the edge of the fabric with the edge of the template to even out this side. About there. So I'm going to use a little cut on that side. Really do need to look at that blunt spot on that blade. Okay, and then, so now when I bring this in line, the whole piece of fabric is the same, has the same angles and sizing as the template. And then I will just continue like that. And that way, as you can see, I will definitely catch all of this in. But I've now got my fabric being nice and symmetrical. The next step is to turn our template around and resalitate the bottom edge of the triangle a quarter inch from the edge of the ruler. And so 
line this up on the sides, have it at the tip, spin it, and then I'm just going to cut off the excess. So my triangles are ending up a bit smaller than I had originally planned, but at least now when I put in my seam allowance, I will cover up all the white and I will have a an isosceles triangle and that will help give me a straighter edge when once they're all together. So the advantage of doing using the bandanas for making my quilt is that I have already got a colour arrangement ready to go and um, and different different panels without having to buy lots of different fabrics. The disadvantage is that I am having to cut them a second time to make sure that they're all the right size. So I think you could do this pattern and idea just as easily by going out and buying different fabrics. As you know, my plan is to use the fa fabrics that I've already got and that's why I'm using these bandanas to make this quilt. And yeah, I'm a little yeah, a little annoyed that I'm having to cut them a second time, but I I'd rather have the triangles right to start with than wonder later why my quilt is twisting. So there we go, I'm going to continue on cutting out these fabrics and I will show you them all done in the next video and we'll start sewing them up.